Kalwinda, um, you are the director of Fusion Brewer Middle Products at Oracle, and uh, we are very happy to welcome you here at Doak TV. Thanks, Christian. Um, so, we, Doak recently did a survey on ETL tool usage that showed up that about uh, 95 percent of all uh, respondents do, do use Oracle Warehouse Builder. Um, and about 87% uh, of them are using the basic ETL version. Okay. Are, do those figures sound surprising to you or uh, is this something that, that you are familiar with based on, on other surveys or studies? Sure, I mean, that's, I mean those, those results are what I would kind of expect from this particular region. You know, Germany has um, h historically a strong install base of Oracle Warehouse Builder, so I would expect to, to see that level of results. Um, does it, how does it compare with other regions? Uh, we have different levels of adoption of Warehouse Builder across, across the regions, but you know, it's, it, the, the numbers are going to be relatively similar in terms of adoption and those that are using the free version as opposed to the, uh, the commercial license version that comes with ODI. Okay, thank you. Um, about 80% of all Oracle Warehouse Builders users estimate the training efforts to be high or very high, while about 89% uh, of them uh, estimate the migration efforts to be high or very high when they need to go to a different ETL tool solution. So how can Oracle support them on their future way through? Sure. And that, and that, I suppose, from, from, a, from a, an architecture perspective or a business perspective, is a key driver. What we've done with the 12C release, though, Christian, is we've focused very much on making that transition path from Warehouse Builder to ODI a more simpler process. And it, there's going to be some steps that customers are going to have to go through, but those steps, we've taken away some of the pain that they would normally experience when you're doing a system or an application change. So a number of things that we've added in the 12 CODI release. The first is the ability to orchestrate Oracle Warehouse Builder pro, um, um, processes, ETL functions, jobs in their current form, so they don't have to go through a migration. That capability is in the base product. Um, the ability to, you know, re-engineer if they so feel that they want to re-engineer their warehouse builder um, current functions, processes, ETL uh, into the ODI framework, they have that capability. And only as of Friday of last week, we've released the, or, um, the migration utility that will provide a step-by-step -step migration process from warehouse builder to ODI. And in that utility itself, there are three specific execution modes that will again give them some confidence around how they will execute and, and, and the likely uh, impact on, on their overall processing so you know as, a, as an administrator of, of warehouse builder I can do a, uh, an, a first of all an analysis phase to understand which elements will be migrated successfully I can then do a trial run and then I can do a final run which will then be committed to the environment so we, we t try to look at it um, holistically and say we understand that this could be a painful process but I think from an Oracle perspective and a, particularly from an ODI engineering perspective we put lots of effort in to make this as seamless as much as possible and the feedback that we've had from customers and partners that have participated in the beta programs have been positive in that sense as well so we're getting good feedback from the interaction that we've had with customers and partners who've supported the, uh, the beta program for 12C. Okay, okay. That sounds interesting. Could you provide uh, a deeper insight on, uh, on the options how to migrate from, from Warehouse Builder to ODI? So are there some specific features that are not supported uh, in, in the migration scenario? For example, how about uh, OMB scripting, which is used by many customers uh, that sure. uh, we are aware of? Yeah, so what we've, what we've tried to do with this first, uh, first iteration of this utility is to cover the percentages really Christian is that we've looked at you know which parts of an, a customer's OWB environment is likely to to drive most of the success with the first release um, there will be subsequent releases of, of the utility and that will provide more capability in in this first release um, we, you know we're covering core competent uh, core core areas um, OMB scripting specifically is, is not available with this first release but you know the, you know there would be an ex 
I can't say for, for sure that it will be part of a future release, but there are elements that we're going to be adding in, in, in a future capability. But at this moment in time, that, the migration utility doesn't provide that level of coverage. Okay, okay. So, uh, based on our survey, nearly 75% nearly uh, of all users see the discontinuation of uh, Oracle Warehouse Builder or specifically basic ETL uh, as a reason to start a search for ETL tools from other vendors. What is Oracle's answer to those customers? Why should they stay uh, with Oracle in the ETL tool portfolio? Thanks, Christian. I think that that's a great, that's a good question. You know, the, there has been some confusion in terms of what is the right strategy for ETL Oracle. I think we, we're making um, a clear statement with the strategy now, and that strategy is very clear. ODI is the strategic ETL piece of technology in Oracle, and you can see that when you look at the breadth of technology that Oracle is supporting. You know, ODI is part of Fusion Apps, so it's part of the ETL capabilities behind uh, Fusion Apps. Um, it's part of our big data strategy, it's part of our fast data strategy, uh, it's part of, more recently, part of our BI app story now, so that our BI apps customers will be getting ODI as their ETL engine on you know, future release, of, sorry, the current release of BI apps and any future releases that they adopt to. So internally, we're, ODI is becoming an important piece of technology in some of the key areas that Oracle is supporting from a customer technology perspective. So. At some point, you know, customers are going to have to consider a new set of ETL technologies. But I feel that what we're providing in ODI today in the 12C release that has just recently been made available is some great com uh, capabilities, um, some great UI um, changes that um, developers will like. Um, we're continuing to invest in the areas that we feel investment should be made in. Um, however, we played, we've, we've invested significantly on making the OWB to ODI transition a seamless transition process with the capability to orchestrate, with the capability to migrate as well. So I think we're covering all the bases here, um, but I think uh, also we're making a very clear statement that ODI is strategic, and you can see that from the other technologies that ODI is, is supporting as well. Okay, okay. So um, there is for many customers another uh, issue or potential issue on the licensing side. So while uh, the, the basic ETL uh, license was included with the database, um, there is uh, currently, uh, at least on the price list, no, no similar option for ODI. Sure. Does Oracle plan to, uh, to make such an option available for Oracle database customers in the future? Okay. At this stage, you know, our pricing model for, for, for either a free version is, is, is something that we're currently debating. Um, there, I don't have right now a clear direction in terms of where that's going to go. What I would say to customers, though, is that they should you know, take a look at 12C. It's available on an OTN. Um, take a look at the OWB migration utility. That's also available um, um, from OTN or via, via my Oracle support. And have start to have a commercial discussion with their Oracle respective Oracle account manager, and then through that process, you know whatever commercial discounts can then be you know, discussed openly as part of an overall value proposition uh, as, as a need to transition to the ETL. And if we do then make some changes in pricing, then obviously we'll come back to to this community in Germany and we'll, we'll notify the community as a whole. I, you know, I think um, I, I think we appreciate the opportunity that DOAG has given us. It's the pla it's given us a, an open communication platform, and I think that's important. You know, we need to ensure that we're doing what is right for our customers. That's important. But you know, also I think our customers need to understand that we need to evolve our technology stack, and we need to take it into directions that are valuable and, and, and meet the requirements of today's customers. And sometimes they do bring hard questions and, and hard discussion points. But I think. An an open communication line with Oracle is an important thing that our customers should have. Right, and Doug is always happy to be part of this That's communication. Great. Well, thank you very much. Thank you, Kulbinder. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks, Christian. Thank you. Bye.